gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. Today we have the one bar Arcanist Infinite Archive build that hit arc 10-4 a few days ago on stream. I previously said the Warden one bar IA build was the easiest to do well with and I have since changed my opinion. This one for sure is the smoothest ride. You could flat footed out tank marauders up to a much higher arc than some of the other classes on the channel. We're going to dive right in and I'm going to be going over it quickly, but the written guide is up and available for you over at the game room TV. Let's get it. For this build, Nord for sure is superior. It makes hitting resist cap easier, freeing up other stats, and gets you back into ults quicker. I did it on an Imperial and it was fine, but you have to make some heavy accommodations on gear for non Nords. We have all 64 points into health, using the Lover Mundus with Bear Haunch food and tripods for potions. For our gear, first we're using the Serpent's Disdain set. This is going to extend damage over time status effects by 16 seconds, which is going to be incredibly valuable in upper arcs as you will be kiting the majority of the time, and specifically to this build, your burning and poison status effects will be extremely high in its damage due to its more or less indefinite duration on mobs, also giving you quite a lot of freedom at times. We pair that with the Heartland Conqueror set, one of the best sets in the game for increasing status effect chance by doubling our charged weapon trait, giving us 470% status effect chance. All of that together looks like this. This is min-max for non-Nords. I'll run through this and then show you what you want to change if your Arcanist is a Nord. We top off our setup with a monster set with a line of armor Oaken Soul and a Frost Staff. All armor pieces are heavyweight with reinforced on the big pieces and Nernhorn on the small pieces. One protective and two healthy traits on jewelry with the charged trait on the staff. You want all armor pieces try enchanted, all jewelry pieces with the magical harm enchant, and then the poison enchant on the weapon, which is very important. You'll be surprised just how much damage you'll get from beefy stages from this one enchant and Serpent's Disdain extending out its status effect. Nords can use a monster set with a line of penetration like Krogs. All jewelry pieces can be healthy and then one or two of the Nernhone pieces can be in divines. So Nords get quite a lot here in those small changes. You get more health or penetration while reaching the same resist cap. And in upper arcs, a little goes a long way. CP is also here for you as well. Nothing new here from previous builds. A note on this for early arcs. Heartland is way overkill. You can replace this with any damage set you like. Pillar of Nern works great. A simple crafted set of something like All Medium Orders Wrath works great. It really doesn't matter. Before you get focused efforts rolling, just throw on something that puts out more damage to clear early arcs faster. You should also use a lightning staff for early arcs. This will considerably speed up your early arc clears. You can also use some damage CP and food as well. I just tell people do what you have to do to make early arcs comfortable for you. But with the Arcanist beam, it's going to mow down adds very quickly. So the accommodations for early arcs can be minimal on the gear side of things if you prefer. For our abilities, again, we have our little duo of scribing skills here that is incredibly powerful for the archive. This has been on several of the builds before, so I'm going to roll a clip from one of those videos explaining it. And if you've seen it already, I'll put a timer at the bottom of the screen so you know exactly where to skip. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you give it a listen so you understand how they work and how they're used. First, we have two huge scribing skills. The first is Warding Soul, set up in this way with Shield, Heal, and Major Vitality. You really want to get these scripts if you don't have them. They are so impactful. This gives you an on-use shield, a heal over time, and then once activated, you get Major Vitality, increasing your shield strength and healing received by 12%. So once you pop this, boom, the shield tooltip is now bigger, giving you an even bigger shield and juicing your healing. With one extended favor vision, this buff extends out to 16 seconds. Any more than one of these visions is overkill. You will for sure be using this more than once every 16 seconds. But having one extension is nice in those one to two sweaty second windows where you get CC'd or something at the end of the 10 second timer. We're using a frost staff due to the tri-focus passive, giving you a meaty shield on every heavy attack. In mid to upper arcs, you'll be weaving in intermittent heavies, one for sustain, two for ferocious support procs if you have that vision, and for constant shielding. Weaving in these heavies in between abilities is enough to literally face tank marauders at certain points. A little trick here for you that you can use in many panic areas is to simply hold down your attack button, do not let go, and right as you fling each snowball, tap your shield. This will give you a double shield every two globals, recover your mag use from your ability shield, and float you through most of the tough mechanics in the archive. Here it is on the Thoat Dragon. This little tactic completely shut down any stress it may have caused. Next is healing contingency set up in this way. I've been talking about this constantly for some months now. It's in my opinion that this is one of, if not the 
best defensive abilities in the game when used in the way that I use it. I know many will disagree, but again, we all play differently. This ability has elevated both many PvP builds on the channel and definitely the archive builds. Some of you have probably heard the explanation a dozen times now, so I won't put you through it again here, but if you haven't, I made a short video I'll link here for you and I'll put in the description for you as well. Plus, you can see it in the gameplay VOD in the description. Even if you are experienced in ESO, if this ability is new for you, I cannot recommend enough that you check out that video, mainly the dodge roll section. This ability introduced some new ways to do some things and the tooltip is not super evident on how to do them. Next, we have Flail. This is a crazy good ability for kiting and AOE sundered damage generation that also heals you when it hits an enemy. You're going to immobilize most mobs with this to help give you some distance to kite and upper arcs. And you can also do things like kite large groups into a scorching support proc on the ground, flail them, immobilize them right inside of it, and it just burns them down for you. When you have a large gaggle and they're all prepped with elemental susceptibility, which we'll go over here in just a moment, you can flail spam, which will generate a ton of damage, burning down groups of mobs with the sundered status effect. Each use of this will build a crux and you will want to sit on your three crux and not use them until you have a panic or emergency situation. When that happens, you use Spite Ward. This gives you a large shield, scaling off max health, that also heals you for each crux you have, also scaling off max health. And that three, with the crit between the heal and the shield, at the baseline values before any archive buffs, this will cover an entire health bar worth of health between the heal and the shield. It's an incredible reset button when you get into trouble. Also, when you're faced with relentless melee mobs and you just can't shake them, you can flail twice, then Spite Ward, and repeat. So flail, flail, Spite Ward. Flail, flail, Spite Ward. You don't really have time to get three flails out just due to the beating you'll be taking. And I found that the two and one combo to be the most effective way to stay alive in those high arc tent situations where you just can't get away from a horde of melee mobs chasing you down. But again, as soon as you can shake free, build your three crux ASAP and sit on it for emergencies. Next is elemental susceptibility. I call Ellie Sus. You will use this the majority of the time. In early arcs, this is going to get out major breach. Once you have some focused efforts rolling, this becomes the best spammable in the game. So this is used to spread burning at the start of stages. You should be light weaving everything you do to get maximum procs of your poison enchant on your weapon as well at the same time. Once that is done and you've spread Ellie Sus and burning, you can use this as a single target spammable to burn down individual troublesome mobs such as the big name mobs like infusers and mystics and whatnot. It's also your main spammable for marauders and bosses. For our ultimate, we have Big Bubble here. It's a huge shield and damage mitigator. Use it often, but try to save it for round three spawns as those are the heaviest typically. It's honestly not very complicated. It's a simple, straightforward setup that is incredibly potent in the archive. For early arcs, definitely bring in the Fate Carver Beam and Treatise, and your rotation with Treatise active is two flails followed by Beam, just like how DPS worked last patch. You can also use the DPS ult here of Tide King or the other morph if you prefer. This will massively speed up earlier arcs. And then at the start of arc two and three, bring back Big Bubble Ult and Warding Soul until the Marauder is dead, and this should trivialize both of them for you in those arcs. As soon as they're dead, fall back on your early arc setup. In arc four, you should be in your full in-game setup and ideally with the focused efforts or two. And boom, there we go gamers. Nice, quick, and simple. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know and have a wonderful day.